Hello friends, welcome, it's Techman Pat. We got a bunch of news this week. While nothing absolutely groundbreaking, it's still something to snack on, which means it's a bunch of small crap that is just air, yeah, basically popcorn at the movies. Actually, friends, I heard something the other day and I wanted to ask you, do you ever just go to the movies to buy popcorn, then go home and watch Netflix? Is that a thing? Anyway, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know if people actually do this. Um, in any case, these small bites might just catch your attention. So let's get on with it. Let's start off with NBN Co. They are off showing how they really just don't care. Though again, the good stuff they do hardly ever makes the news. Technically uploading this video is them helping, but I digress. This time they have been caught out and forced to apologize for leaving asbestos filled cable pits in the open on a residential street in Brisbane. And what a surprise it was for the locals to find the stuff lying around. Also to admit, I was quite impressed that the fellow who found it knew what it looked like. I think it's been a while since the government has made any public campaign about the stuff. Let me know below if you've seen any advertising from the government on how to identify asbestos these days. Look, in any case, it is obviously asbestos is a health risk. In fact, any amount of the fibers inhaled can cause lung cancer, though the lead time on that is between 10 to 80 years. Pretty damaging stuff from a company that you would hope at least does a take five before working, maybe fills out a JHA, or you know, at question five, stop work if there is any asbestos, immediate removal by authorized person required. Anyway, that also comes at a time when a video posted on the Humans of Bankstown Facebook page showing a conduit attached to the trunk of one tree, which was being used to run an aerial telecommunication cable between two points along the street. That story was first reported by ABC News. You see, the cable, while not put in by NBN Co, has been around since 2015. Initially, Telstra implemented this new type of cabling. See, they connect it to the two trees, uh, give it some slack, and as the tree grew, the cable was raised to the desired height. It's called efficiency, guys. Have you heard of it? Telstra obviously has. Now, like I mentioned a few videos ago, Telstra is laughing at NBN Co all the way to the bank. The massive mess they sold them is a massive joke. A lot of masses involved in this one. Now, let's move on. Seems like we cannot get rid of the privacy issue. This week, the ACT's chief police officer, Ray Johnson, has described more than 100 illegal access of metadata as an administrative oversight. Yep, because it's an oversight, not a standard process. Basically, back in 2015, not too long ago, there was 116 accesses without proper authorization. The officer who did so was not approved, but hey, still did it, not surprised. So now they are confident that the new process they have put in place will stop this from ever happening again until it does, which is more than likely already happening right now and we'll hear about it in a few years. You see, it was not until the Ombudsman's offices contacted the AFP in February 2018 to follow up on the remedial action that some of the affected data was quarantined. So let's keep going with the small bites of news. Can you believe that Foxtel still has 5 million subscribers? Guys, come on, who hasn't checked their statements? I bet there are plenty who are still paying it on their credit cards after all these years and haven't even used it. So I bid you now, if you ever had Foxtel, check if you're still paying for it. Now, last week we talked about Foxtel bringing Netflix into its ecosystem. Now we know a little bit more. They have combined the two into one seamless experience, very similar to the Apple TV. You still have to be subscribed to both, but at least you can watch it all from one media device and screen. It's all about integration with them at the moment, making it easy to have many of these services on one device. I honestly wouldn't be surprised that if in the future they would also add maybe Disney and Stan and maybe tin hat foil on at some point, maybe even make it exclusive. And I know everybody hates that word, but that is a obviously a far reaching decision. Let me know in the comments below, does having Netflix on your Foxtel TV device make it a worthwhile purchase or subscription reason to Foxtel? Will their numbers rise beyond 5 million? All right, let's move on. Finally, on to Telstra, our beloved swindlers who managed to give NBN Co. the worst deal in the history of deals. 
when they sold him that copper network. CEO Andrew Penn spoke to Ray Hadley, a Sydney radio voice fella who likes to shock. So shock jockey, as you may say. And so he tried to shock Penn with a spicy question on the topic of our favorite overseas call centers and their location. Well, Penn had a story for him. Apparently back in 2015, when Penn took office, he tried to bring back or rather repatriate the call center from the Philippines and India back to Australia. But the costs and the time it would take to do so was something Telstra couldn't bear. It was apparently a long time, like multiple years to try and achieve this. Now, calls to call centers have dropped from 50 million to 30 million in one year, and already they have put efforts in educating the customers uh, and particularly providing specialized operators for older Australians. So a combination of both things have led to call centers falling apart. And you might notice this on a lot of sites, they give you a lot of reading material before you actually get to speak to someone, or at least you submit something via email. Now, he continued that numbers wise, they have been adding over 4,000 NBN customers per day, and they need a lot of help to manage these new installs. He did add that he is proud of the fact that the international call centers can provide even better services than our local ones, which honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, I've had some terrible experiences with call centers overseas and local, and I've had both great experiences with local and overseas uh, call centers. Actually, I will add uh, the link below for this article where he talks about a few more bits and bobs, but Tell us a story below of your worst call center experience and maybe if you have one, someone who went above and beyond to help you, I would love to hear a positive story. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Hope these little bites have been a little bit more interesting or maybe sharper, quicker. Thanks for watching, bye.